What's up, everyone? It's Alicia here. What a weekend we had on D Glow, both FBO and MBO side. We already uh, recapped the FBO side, so this time it's the MBO side, and it was a nail biter. If you don't want to hear spoilers or what the results were, I recommend switching off from this video and coming back later when you have watched what happened. Uh, but if you don't care about spoilers, this is the right video for you so, because we're going to go through what happened throughout the weekend and in the final round. We will mainly focus on the final round, but we will touch up on the weekend uh, in general. Going into the final round, I was actually happy because my predictions were relatively close. I predicted that uh, Ricky Wysocki and Chris Dickerson would be fired for the one, uh, one and two. Well, Chris was basically out of the question, but Ricky was still in uh, striking distance and also that uh, places three f through five would be between Calvin, Paul Macbeth, and Samuel Lissot. And uh, it looks really good going into the final round. But unfortunately, final round had a couple of curveballs and something nice also. Let's go to the standings itself. Here we go. Calvin Heimberg uh, took the win. Not an easy win, though. He was tied with Corey Ellis. And they were actually... They went for a sudden death. They went for a playoff, whatever you want to call it. And Calvin Heimberg came victorious and won. Uh, it was a really close battle between Coriolis. They were back and forth uh, throughout the last round. Uh, on the whole 15, Coriolis took a bogey. And at that point, Calvin had the chance to run with it. But Coriolis birdied the last three holes and Calvin just got one birdie. That's the reason why they went uh, for the playoff to battle it out. Ricky Wysocki and Gavin Rathburn having a minus 10 and climbing the leaderboard. Ricky being number three, which was, he, he played a really good round, like bogey free, uh, no big mistakes. And well, he just played the, like the Ricky Wysocki. And it's been a while, like uh, in the European Open, he wasn't uh, himself. So it's good to see that Ricky's on form once more. And Gavin Rathburn playing an incredible round too and climbing into number four with Adam Hams. Tying it. And Adam Hams played a bogey free round two, a really good round for Adam Hams. But what happened to our two lead card players? Well, Paul Macbeth, unfortunately, as you can see here, Paul played uh, under his level. And it, it's a bad place to play, worse than you usually play when it's the last round, when it's the final round. So, uh, well, yeah, it just wasn't Paul's day. Like, people have those days, and even pro players have those days. It just wasn't going for Paul Macbeth and the other one Simon Lissoth had a similar similar day even even worse like as you can see uh, the front nine was only minus one and the back nine was minus three you don't win championships playing like that and it actually shows Simon was really frustrated throughout the round and even in the first four holes you could see that Simon wasn't feeling it and he was struggling uh, it, it's actually sad to see because well I would like to see Simon as a European plays higher Kevin Jones throughout the round was one of the players I thought that could actually surprise because well uh, his front nine was minus six and I was like okay Kevin Jones is apparently going to be at the podium unfortunately for Kevin Jones he played par on the back nine so uh, no Kevin Jones on the podium great fin finish for Kevin Jones but I, I'm pretty sure he wanted more, more from this tournament. Brody Smith, when the lead card started and I started to watch uh, the live coverage, I was like, okay, this is going to be a really bad day for Reddit. If Brody Smith managed to uh, crack the podium, because it looked like that, playing minus six on the front nine, I was like, okay, Brody Smith could actually do things. Uh, unfortunately, also Brody Smith had a terrible back nine. But yeah, the whole tournament, in my opinion, was between Calvin Heimberg and Coriolis, even though Kyle Klein uh, seemed to be the one battling for the win after the first round. But Calvin played minus eight, minus eight, and minus nine. So consistency won this tournament. Also, Coriolis played minus 10, minus six, and minus nine. So that's also a really consistent like card. For the whole tournament. Consistency is the key to winning tournaments. Uh, one thing I was surprised. Albert Cham for a long time was still uh, in the battle for a top 5 finish. But as you can see the uh, back 9. He shot plus 3. Starting from the 8th hole. The bogey streak started from there. So that was unfortunate. Every time a European cracks the top 10. I'm like really happy. So unfortunate for Albert Cham. Uh, for the back nine. Albert Cham is a fun player to watch. But yeah, I, you know where I think this was a really good tournament, especially like the ending of the tournament. It was relatively the same as in the European Open when Eagle and Paul 
battle for the last round. It was almost the same to watch Calvin and Corey battle it out because they were so close and they actually went to the playoff rounds and that's how, how it ended. I think we're, we're going to put an interview at the end of the video. As, you, as always, uh, this was my conclusion. I think Declo was a success. I think it was a really good tournament. The weather was really nice. There wasn't a lot of like big winds, no rain, like perfect conditions. So you could you could actually see uh, great disc golf. And that's and that's all we ask as fans to see great disc golf in great conditions. Of course, I love like when the wind is just gusting and the disc are flying all over the place. It's, Fun to see how the pro players react to that. Thanks for watching. If you like content like this and you want to see more of me, listen to more of me, subscribe, hit the bell notification button also, because, well, that's the best way to be notified when I post up a new video. Like the video and comment down below. Uh, what do you thought about the D-Club? I, I don't know. I'm interested to hear who's your play favorite MPO player. I have a couple of them, like favorite MPO players uh, for different reasons. I'm going to list them in a separate video probably not i'm not gonna bore you now interview time thanks for watching see you guys on the next one and joining us now is our runner-up in corey ellis and corey of course difficult to catch up just moments after the playoff but got to know how are you feeling about your performance out there i feel like i missed a few shots i definitely could have executed a little better um but you know i looked at the scores which i never do but i knew i had to come down the stretch and uh, just that I had some trouble on uh, 15. That, that really cost me there. I, f I felt like I, I had to birdie out just to even have a chance. And I did and came back and luckily enough tied it. But just unfortunate OB by a quarter inch probably. Yeah, and I, I, I do want to go back on, you know, 17 and 18 you chased him down he had you by a couple strokes he ended up throwing the safe shot on 17 getting up and down 18 there's so few birdies that are had there and you all but parked it knowing that you had to do that in the final two holes and seeing kelvin miss on 18 how excited were you that you pushed it to the playoff uh, i was excited to have the opportunity to win you know i thought uh when i was down two i knew it was just going to take a matter of luck at that point. And it's lucky that Calvin missed because he doesn't miss often from that range. Well, and in a similar sense, I'll ask you that. You rarely ever miss as well, especially inside C1X. We had you at 100%. How do you bring that level of focus? And you're clearly known as one of the best putters. You've won putting awards here on the Pro Tour. But how do you bring that type of focus to an elite level event like this in the final round? Just try to remember that your body's going to take over. Just breathe. I focus on my breathing, and I make sure I know what the wind's doing beforehand and just commit fully to the putt. So you push it to a playoff. Calvin's been pushed there before. Back in Jonesboro, he came out on that one. But for yourself, knowing that you're just a stroke or two away from taking down your first Elite Series event, what will you take away from this, knowing you were so close and it just barely slipped past you? Uh, it, it hurts, that's for sure. But, you know, every loss is a, is a lesson learned. And I, uh, I know I still have to be more consistent if I want to win. And so close. It was an incredible battle. You, of course, were a fierce competitor throughout. Everyone knew you would be to watch you clutch up, to get those last two holes to even force the playoff. And like you said, just a matter of inches on that final hole. Otherwise, I think we might have seen it continue. Uh, it was uh, truly inspiring for a lot of people. And we know that your big breakthrough win on the Elite Series is just around the corner. It could be any given weekend now. Is there anything you want to say to everyone out in the world, the thousands of viewers that have been watching? Uh, just thanks, everyone, for the support. You know, I uh, thank you. Well, again, incredible performance, great battle. Thanks for joining us, everyone. That's Corey Ellis, runner-up here at d -Glow. And again, rejoining us, our champion in Calvin Heimberg. And Calvin, I don't want to make this about me, but 108 holes of walking around for me this weekend, and you're going to make us all walk more. Playoff time. Yeah, I'm sorry. I should have made the putt on the last hole. All right, that's all I wanted to hear. Okay. I think we can cut it. No, yep. uh, seriously, yeah. you, as you just said before we started, <laughs> Seems like you can't win it in, in regulation, but clearly an epic battle. Yeah. What, what's your takeaways now that you've had just a few thoughts to process the playoff that you had with Corey? 
Um, yeah, I mean, the playoff didn't last long. Uh, unfortunately, he went out of bounds off the tee. I didn't really know that. Um, at the beginning, they cheered, and so, like, I just assumed he was in bounds. Definitely heard a wall get hit, but I assumed he bounced back in. Um, I honestly thought my shot was pulled right, and I was going to be in the trap, so I might have kicked out or something, or maybe the disc is just more stable than I thought. But, um, yeah, I don't think the playoff was really the story. I mean, it was definitely the round. There were some lead changes. Corey made the charge at the end, and we all had our, we both had our moments on different stretches of that course, and um, I would say we both threw, threw the disc really well this weekend, and that's why we excelled and uh, kind of separated a little bit from the field. It, it was incredible, and I think one of the greatest shots maybe in toboggan history is the one you threw hole number tw uh, hole number 13, the yeah. downhill. Talk, yeah. Walk us through that a little bit, because did you even see the way it finished uh, once you threw the forehand? Um, no, I did see it get a skip. Um, that's a complete bonus hole for me. Like I don't really even anticipate having like a look at it, but uh, yeah, I threw it good. It popped up the flat, and I saw it get a skip. I didn't realize it was gonna, like a straighter skip. It didn't even skip right. Normally, when they get in there in the circle, they're they're to the right, and that the disc was basically parked a little left, so it got a really good ground action. I'm interested to see how it actually flew down there, but uh, yeah, that was definitely probably the highlight of my round as far as shot wise. Yeah, and easily, like I said, maybe the highlight of the weekend. It was so incredible, and. I am excited to watch, have you watch that because it basically s skips straight rather uh -huh. than hooking up like you would expect down there. Uh, so some good fortune. Going into hole number 18, obviously Corey had picked the stroke up on you on 17, but yeah. going into 18, that feels like it's a real roll of the dice. Walk us through kind of the, the mentality in throwing hole number 18 off the tee. Yeah, I mean, 18 is another one of those holes that I don't really expect to get. Uh, it's kind of a big forehand and um, it's not necessarily my strong suit especially going uphill I'm just not great at that angle but uh, Corey threw it he threw it really well and um, he put it inside the circle so I knew I had to go for it uh, threw it lower than he did um, but still gave myself a look I was like circles edge uh, putt that I would have loved to have made just to close it out right there but um, yeah I mean if, if he wouldn't have been that close I probably would have gone a little more conservative off the tee just to eliminate any uh, kind of flukiness that can happen you know hits and rolls out of bounds so but he threw it good, so I, I, you know, I have to push to try to win in regulation. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't happen, but uh, yeah, it's definitely a scary hole to finish on. Well, it was uh, incredible to see not only the push by Corey, but then you guys taking it to the extra holes. I presume you're going to have next weekend off. We just have a, yeah. uh, not just, but we have a Silver Series event. And then, of course, we head to Ledgestone. And Ledgestone, do you feel like maybe there's a little unfinished business there? Um, yeah, last year we got cut short. Um, I guess I share a win with Rick there, which is kind of weird. But, um, yeah, I'm excited to go back. I I feel like Northwood Black kind of suits some parts of my game pretty well. And then Eureka is another one of those courses that I feel like I can play really well at. So i um, definitely excited to go back and, uh, you know, see if we can win another one. Well, it feels like hopefully uh, hitting and trending all in the right direction at the right time with Worlds right around the corner. Again, final thoughts. Anything you want to say to the world out there that might be watching? Uh, not really. I mean, not, nothing that I haven't said already, but yeah, just thank you guys for watching, um, making this possible for all of us out here. All right, everyone. That is, again, your champion in playoff fashion, Calvin Heinberg here at the Great Lakes Open. Thank you.